I am so fortunate to have such great sponsors on this channel. Our sponsors, as well as our patrons, are the people who keep the lights on here at Esoteric Atlanta. So I can continue delivering videos to you multiple times a week. I am so lucky to be a part of Gnostic TV, to have a SIA as a sponsorship, and to now be sponsored by the incredible Spooky2 company. Spooky2 is like a rife machine generator to help you in your journey through this human experience. If you would like to purchase Spooky2, there are a few different discount codes that you can do, all of which you can, again, find down in the description box below. For all additional products, the regular products, you can get 5% off by entering Bryce Watson when you check out. Here is a little clip of what Spooky2 can do for you. Hi, Joan, Echo, and the Spooky Do team. This is Kanika here, and I'm here to share not just my and my partner's Spooky Do journey. Spooky Do has been superbly special for my partner and I. I'm actually sitting in the scalar field. In our personal experiences, my partner and I have uh, literally gone off all our, our vitamin and multivitamin multivitamin and mineral supplements we hardly take them we used to take them to support and supplement our well-being but i've been using the daily wellness protocol and my hair has just exploded in its growth the skin's gotten uh, beautiful the dh experimental frequencies i've been experimenting with a lot of them we have such good strength in our body we don't fall ill to an extent that my partner has hay fever peter he has hay fever but this time i've started using the immune super booster and oh my god it is magic uh we recently this year purchased the remotes as well so we use our dna clipping and we put our clippings in it and uh it's just been so beautiful and profound and I have always been, so I pray daily, I meditate daily and I've been sitting in the scalar field and meditating and praying and my psychic abilities, my connection to the divine, if I just want to put it in a nutshell, is just increasingly becoming so potent. I've been using the 12 strand DNA activation as well and the DH experimental frequencies just to see how it goes and the the effects are so magnificent in our, on our physical bodies and our like um, energetic field i'm an energy healer i take clients through um quantum healing sessions while sitting in the field so that they can also i can be a clearer conduit and send these energies as well by pure quantum entanglement right and if people were to not believe this all this physical proof shows what a gem of a product this is. I can't like recommend this more to anybody like. So yes, much love and gratitude. Thank you for listening. And uh, I could share so much more, but I'd like to wrap this up now. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. Thank you for joining us for our bi-weekly coffee chats with my good friend, Catherine Edwards, my sister from another mister over across the pond in the United Kingdom. How are you today, Catherine? I'm good. I'm really good. But we've got so many exciting things to talk about. And, um, you know, what I would say is I love the conversations that we have in our coffee chats because they really explore the deeper issues that are going on across all the different communities. They tie in very much with the whole mind control and brainwashing and delusional thinking things. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really good and looking forward to today's chat. 
Now, I know, Catherine, I've gotten a lot of new subscribers, especially since I've been dropping a new series on Friday with the P family. I can't really say their full names. So if you are a new subscriber, thank you so much for being here. Just so you guys know, I said bi-weekly because Catherine and I film every week together. We've been filming together for years now, and we do it every other week. So next week, we'll be on Catherine's channel, and then this week, we're on, and the next week, my, you guys get it. So if you're new to my channel, please go down to the description box below under show notes, and please make sure that you subscribe to Catherine. Catherine's channel as well. If you like the things I cover, you're going to like the things that Catherine covers as well. Um, and we and we also sometimes like like this week we were filming twice together. We had a great interview on Tuesday with the lovely Kathy O. That's all I'll say because her name um, kind of triggers the powers that be. And I have not had a chance to load it yet because of some issues I've been dealing with, which we'll get into. But I know Catherine has you probably uploaded it that interview already. I have, but it's really interesting. I've had so many people contact me just on that issue about how they didn't get any notification on either of the channels that it went up on so, so and quite a few things about wow your channel's really being and and people talk about shadow banning we're going to cover a little bit of some of these issues in a minute but it's a real thing where where there's a lot of you can often tell it's like if i've just put something up about emf on instagram and, and immediately comes up with a fact check warning yeah when things where you've got really big people speaking out about things and they're not being shown, then you really, that's a really good indication that you need to watch that one. Um, so, yes, I did put it up, but it's not being shown to people. And I've had so many people contact me. I have more than I've had for any other video just saying it's not showing up for them. They haven't seen it. it they didn't get notified. So with that being said, you guys, that is totally out of our control. I had one time a long time ago, Catherine, I had someone email me and curse me out because they weren't getting notified of my videos. And I was like, that's not something that the content, that's YouTube. Like we can't, mm -hmm. we can't do that. So just make sure you guys know the drill, um, you know, the scrutiny we're under. So um, make sure you are subscribed to us. And just, I know I have a few people on this channel that just go, we'll check and occasionally check my channel to make sure they haven't missed anything. So do the same thing for Catherine as well. Yeah. And that's, that, it's kind of a, it's like a double edged sword, right? Like when it happens to you, yeah. you know, you must be saying something, there must be some truth, but it also sucks because you're being, you know, mu muzzled basically. And so, um, and then for, for the new people too. So we both have a backup channel on rumble. Um, and I think Catherine, you also have bit shoot too, correct? I do. Yeah. Bit shoot I do. And, and I'm a little bit behind putting everything up there, but I always make sure I do. And I think also, excuse me, I've got a little poor little frog in my throat, but one thing I would say is we're really seeing back in 2020, and we all know what we're talking about, there was a huge amount of censorship. Personally, I'm seeing that now we're getting a lot more out open discussions about what might be causing health issues. And I'm not just talking about this. I'm talking about air, water, food, um, uh, energy, EMF, etc. We're seeing the censorship come back big time. And I think what a lot of people are doing, and we're going to be talking about the impact of it on the spiritual side of things, when people are over the mark about things, you know, don't be fooled by the algorithms on these platforms because just because something hasn't got a huge amount of views, quite often they're the ones you want those, to be looking at. Those are those so, videos, yeah. 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 I thought I'd turn my WhatsApp off, but it's flashing up. Sorry about that. Yeah. Big Brother's watching you. It keeps pushing that. <laughs> I keep logging out and it, it just literally keeps coming back up. So I'll do, log out again whilst I'm doing it. So, well, I will yeah. Say, you're right, Catherine, for these coffee chats. You know, I do a lot of deep dives. Catherine does deep dives into her, you know, material as well. She's really great into organic health. I, I'll say it that way to try to watch again um, and I'll put her website down below guys but for these coffee chats if you're new we never really come to these co coffee chats with like we have the answers these are just like more complex um, conversations that we have around certain topics and ideas and and we call them coffee chats because we love our we have such great subscribers of course we get our trolls but we have such amazing subscribers friends um, who join in the conversation in the in the comment section so we would you know again we're, we're, we're not the arbiters of truth we have our own opinions but we also Catherine and I also like to hear other people's opinions too because I think that's where we're very common Catherine we want our ideas challenged we mm. want to see where our blind spots are and so um, I encourage you guys to leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section just please be respectful to each other and understand that no on the this planet none of us really know the full story of what's going on and if you think you do you definitely don't so, yeah, so. No, you think you do, you're definitely being mind controlled definitely and it's, thank goodness we don't because there's some exciting things coming yeah <laughs>
Well, I sent Catherine, you know, frequently we'll kind of text during the week to figure out what we want to talk about. And I had stumbled across this like Instagram story or this like TikTok where these two guys were talking and this guy was talking about this werewolf gang game not gang, game, G-A-M-E, that this Russian student, I don't know how long ago, I don't know if he, remember if he said how long ago, created. And it actually reminded me a lot of the game show that's really big right now, especially in the English-speaking world. I, I'm sh other countries might have a version of this called Traders. It's one of my favorite games. It's kind of the same concept. And basically, you know, you have these people, a group of people, and you have, let's say you have 10 people. And two, you, you give them a card. They can't see what's on the card. They look at the card, and they're either going to be a villager or a werewolf. So you have two werewolves and eight villagers. And nobody knows. Of course, the werewolves, you know who you are. And then and during the game, at, at night in the game, I guess if you're playing it in a classroom, people will just close their eyes. Um, the werewolves will decide on which person they're going to unalive. And then in the morning, the unalived person is there, who's obviously a villager. And then everybody else, including the werewolves, have to figure out who the werewolves are. So it's a huge kind of game of mental manipulation. And um, most of the time, this guy said that, and most of the times they played this game. So the winners of the game, if the villagers can unalive the werewolves, get them both out. Before the game is over, the villagers win. But if the werewolves can be left with only two villagers, then the werewolves win. And most of the time, the werewolves win. And I quoted him. I wrote it down. He said, "What this guy, the guy that created this game, his point was that an uninformed minority, or excuse me, an uninformed majority will always lose against an informed minority. So the informed minority in this game are the two werewolves. The uninformed majority are the villagers. And most of the time, the informed majority or minority wins because they can manipulate, right? And I thought, what a genius example of things that, oh my God, as we're talking, my Adobe just tried to, <laughs> I see you, big brother. Um, so I, what an perfect example for so many different facets of life that we're living in, not just the greater story of what we're dealing with, but just, just in general stuff we go through of where we don't, we don't know everything, but we react on the, on the small amount of information we do have, and it causes catastrophe. Oh, I loved it. I'd never heard of the werewolf game and I'd never heard of the other one that you mentioned. But when you sent it through to me, I just thought it was genius because so many people are having the discussions. Uh, you know, once you start questioning the world in a different way, people call it wake up, but whatever you want to call it. Um, once you start questioning things in a different way, the question keeps coming back. First and foremost, like, how can such a small number of people control everyone else? um and also in terms of which we can come on to the fact well surely they're doing it to themselves if they're poisoning the air water skies goodness knows what else and this was such a perfect example of how when you look at how the whole spiritual laws of the universe again whatever you want to call them about how when people like freemasons get control of these laws and really understand the uh, uh how this universe functions in depth how it makes them so easy to manipulate and control the rest of us. And this is why I think conversations like this and everyone who's speaking out in so many different ways are so important because once you start to see who the werewolf is or what rules they're working to, then it becomes much more difficult for you to be manipulated. Absolutely. It's interesting. I, um, I, I talked about this before. Again, if you're new to my channel, like, pretty early on when I started opening my channel, I, I was doing a lot of research into like the Fool Society and Agartha during World War II, these kind of these conspiracies. And I ran across in my research this act called the Hess Act. And this act basically is propaganda. It's basically where the Nazis, the Shm Yahtzees, as people say, I won't say the Yahtzees, that's the, the pretend word for that group. And the Pope got together and created this propaganda this fake news to put out into the common the common folk that like things like astrology and divination were of the devil and the reason why the yahtzees and the pope decided to do this is because they wanted to hoard that spiritual those spiritual tools for themselves so that they mm. can put one up on on society well look how well it worked look how well it worked it's it, it's been a little under a hundred years and how many people are out there still thinking 
that astrology is of the devil, still thinking that tarot cards are demonic, when it's really nothing but Yahtzee propaganda that they're following. It's from the Hess Act. Well, when I started talking about this, a mutual friend of ours, Emmy, who has a channel herself, she's a Reiki master, she was the first person that noticed it because she start, She took all of my, my research source material and she saved the websites and she looked at them first and they were fine, but she saved them on her computer and then she went back to look at them and all of those websites had magically been taken down. Yeah. 404. So, you know, kind of the flip side of that is when the when the uninformed uh, majority starts to find things and the informed majority has power over those things they can then continue to take away right so even in my research i know and i, I always give that dis disclaimer like this is the re this is the information i'm giving you guys off of what's available to me with yes. understanding that there could be a totally different historical timeline that's not even available to us I love it. And this happens a lot in the health and wellness field as well. So some of the doctors that I do a lot of research into the natural technologies, again, a paper, and then you'll go back six months later, it's gone. It's completely yeah. been wiped. And, you know, there's no accident in this at all. And of course, it, with modern technology, it's getting easier and easier and easier for people to do that. And I think when we start realizing that, um, you know, it's so easy to control our what information that we're able to make our decisions on so we often talk about you know knowledge is power knowledge protects but actually a lack of knowledge makes you incredibly vulnerable and a lack of knowledge is also um can be linked to misinformation and it's so easy to feed people misinformation divert all their energy and attention off and the other thing I think this really links into is we know when we look at big industry big pharma petrochemical industry, things like this. When you look at the litigation cases against so many of these people, and yet most people still follow the advice that's given there. It's absolutely quite incredible. And this is the pure brainwashing that if you keep subliminally repeating things over and over again, plus you remove the other information sources, then people sort of almost go into tunnel vision and think I've got no choice. I mean, how many times do we hear people saying, well, you know, I haven't got any choice but to trust the doctor? And that's because a lot of the other choices have been taken away from them or slandered so badly. Um, it's horrific. In the UK here, I'm trying not to use too many trigger words on your channel. In the UK here, um, there's a big disclosure going on now about contaminated blood that was given to loads of children and loads of people quite a few, I think it was 20 years ago or so. Loads of people died, loads of children died, loads of people had their lives ruined. And what's come out from the public inquiry, God knows how many years later, is that they knew about this at the time and it was a big cover up. That it's happened to my aunt. That happened to my aunt. She, um, she, my aunt, um, when she was in her twenties, had a kidney transplant, and she was always very sick. And she ended up having a blood transfusion at some point, and the blood they did not check the blood, and it had hepatitis in it. And mm. when she got into, her, she would have to go every year to be checked, and it, the hepatitis stayed dormant. But that's how they figured out she had cancer eventually, was because they were doing all these blood. But yeah, that that that. I mean, how horrific is that? And now with all of these, yeah, yeah. with blood transfusions, it's. Yeah. So hiding information for people is a massive manipulation ball, but also a small minority being in control of certain uh, information is an even bigger manipulative tool. Absolutely. It totally is. And we also see this, you know, not just in like the information warfare of like our survival but we see that again in the spiritual community as well. And I, you guys know, I'll keep giving you a little bit of an update. So um, I, this week has been horrific for me and I apologize. Uh, next week is going to be, I usually film a week in advance. So next week's going to be a little light on videos because I just have not been able to do because I got two strikes, uh, copyright strikes on uh, what was, when was it? It was Monday. I, I got up and I'd had these strikes and it was from my Sophia code series. And if you have three strikes, they take your channel down. And so I panicked. I text you. But quite often on two, I was going to say, because my first channel got never got to a third strike. It, they just took it on the second one. So yeah. it was, such was a major risk for you. Yeah. Major risk. And it's very, it's very, um, I was up, upset all day. I mean, we, we filmed with, with Kathy and then I, 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 the rest of the day I was just like trying to like, 
calm myself down. You know, this is four years worth of work of really hours and hours and hours and hours of work. And the fact that I got in strikes so, uh, falsely because in, in um, I, I think in most free, free country, a uh, free um, Western countries, we have something in the United States, it's called the fair use section 107 of fair use, which I, I'm sure almost every Western country has something very similar, where you're able to like read a copyrighted book and give commentary, you're mm -hmm. giving your you're, you can use copyrighted. That's why we have channels out there that they listen, like they take people who've never heard the Rolling Stones, for example, and they play like sympathy for the devil, but the person's reacting to it and giving feedback, that's fair use. So there's mm -hmm. no strikes, they can use sympathy for the devil, you know, or whatever, but Bob Seger song, as long as there's a reaction. Now, it would be a violation if I were to go on my channel and just read the book without giving any type of feedback or commentary, right? It'd be an absolute violation. For any audible books, they usually have the author read, like Kathy said she was reading her own, or the author is in the process of casting a voice actor to read the book. So th that's another contract. So the strikes that I got were false anyway, because I was under protection of Section 107 of Fair Use. And I sent, I, I stayed up, I got one hour of sleep on Monday night. I stayed up all night sending in my the paperwork showing that it was fair use to get them reinstated. And I'd emailed, because YouTube does suggest you email the party in case there is. And so I emailed um, the Sophia Code Foundation to be like, basically WTF. Like I, first of all, you guys know I was a huge supporter of this book huge mm -hmm. supporter and pr promoted people getting this book and not only that even if I hadn't been even if my my commentary had been critical which it wasn't I was still within my legal right uh, under mm -hmm. under fair use what what was done to me was censorship basically and anyway I someone from the, a very sweet person a very sweet assistant called me back from the from the uh, foundation she was really kind very lovely apologized profusely for what had happened and they're in the process of removing the strikes right now um which i'm really grateful and i i told her on the phone it takes a big person to like do that and i'm really grateful um you know but but however like with that being said for me now i i now have more information and i now have more awareness of what can actually happen and um but and for them i mean I did make a post about it, you guys, and I had someone comment like, freely forgive as you've forgiven. And I, I'll, I'll read the post. I'll say, I received a very heartfelt apology from the Sophia Code Foundation today. The strikes are being removed. I'm very grateful. They're willing to do the right thing. With that being said, I still have a very bitter taste in my mouth regarding the whole thing. I will still be researching into all the allegations and claims being made as I feel it's my duty to get to the truth of all things. Thank you guys so much for the support until everything is released. Please go to my Rumble channel for the Magdalene series. And I had someone say, freely forgive as you've been forgiven. Well, here's the thing too. And when it comes to like the spiritual community and forgiveness and, and healing, I think there's also a little bit of manipulation in this as well that keeps that keeps the controlling entity, whatever that is, in control. So mm -hmm. this guy wrote, freely forgive as you have been forgiven. And I said, yes, but forgiving is not forgetting or allowing bad behavior to continue. Forgiving is not dropping your boundaries don't confuse forgiveness with abuse it's comments like these that keep people in abusive relationships it's comments like these that enable narcissists i would urge you to research skirt scorched earth in terms of psychology i can forgive them for what they did to me and still expose the allegations made by other victims i can forgive them for what they did to me but also never work to promote their work again Again, forgiveness is not making yourself a doormat to the manipulation of others. And so I wanted to focus on that comment too, because that's another thing where we where we see inform like we see this and we see this all the time, don't we, Catherine, in the spiritual world, where people manipulate victims. And well, you just need to forgive your abu abuser. Well, yes, you can forgive that person for doing bad things to you, but still keep a boundary. And still, like, be like, uh, you know, this is an experience now that I can learn from and, and kind of hold my heart, my cards a little bit closer. Is there anything you want to elaborate on that, Catherine? I think, yeah, there definitely is, because it, there's so many good points in there. First and foremost, judgment. I think as a society, we've never been more judgmental. For mm -hmm. some weird and bizarre reason, and I have no idea, I'll probably blame you for this. We all know I don't, in a nice way, it's a joke, but... We all know our devices are listening to everything. I don't have anything like Siri or anything activated on any device, but they still, you have a conversation and suddenly all the ads will pop up. And for some reason yesterday, I was just relaxing, doing a whole load of gardening really late at night, and a true crime thing came up on my phone. Which I don't normally. That's my fault, y'all. <laughs> so, that, so that's why I was laughing when I was so inspired. So I watched it, and it was about someone in America called Wade, someone who'd murdered these women. It was awful. But 
the thing is, it's like in the comment section, and this guy who basically, and there is a point to my story, by the way, this guy had murdered these two women. And well, the first woman he'd murdered, they'd gone out to bar her and her friend. They were in their 30s. And they'd met these two guys and they'd gone back with them and two of them had hooked up and then he led, met, murdered her. And instead of sort of saying how horrendous, the abuse in the comments against the murdered woman and her friend for saying how awful to have picked up men in a bar, it's like... So with the comments, we say we love people giving a different opinion to us and we genuinely do i have changed my opinion so many times based on new information that's been provided by viewers and all sorts of other sources but that's different to telling someone how they should behave yeah that's a 100%. judgment and that's it's different true. from shaming someone for doing it and it's quite difficult it, it's a finesse thing it's quite a fine line but have you thought of this is very different for saying you shouldn't behave like this, you should do that. A completely different energy, a completely different intent. And I think this is why abusers do get away with stuff for so much, because judgment in our society is so rife now yeah. that it's it's become acceptable. And it's not acceptable. And you can never learn from that position. If you're in a position of judgment, you're not open to actually learning and changing your opinion. And I love that. And that's what, you know, when I was, I was looking at that, because this guy doesn't have all the information. He doesn't know that if my channel goes down, I lose all my sponsorships. I lose yeah. income. Like, th this is a very serious, and, and, and the girl that I spoke to at the Sophia Foundation, she got that. She was very, yeah. she was very upset because she understand that that actually could have really altered my life in a big way to try to get all those brand deals back that put food on my table and keep the and feed my dog. And so just to be flippant about it, yes, you, you know, and, and that's one thing. And I wanted to also talk more. So he he's telling me to, what to do without knowing, having all the information of what actually happened or having any understanding of what it's like to have your income and your, your hard work taken away from you unfairly and unjustly. And, and so that's a good point. But also, again, when it comes to the spiritualism, we talked about this as well, because of course, you know, as this happened to me with the, the, SIA, the SIA code, I have been researching um, beforehand. We were talking about this offline, Catherine, and I've said this before. When I read a book, most of the time, I don't even really look into the author because I'm more interested in the book. I'm not really interested in, I, I'm looking for the information, right, in the book. And um, so with Kaya Ra, I never really looked into her because I was just, in, and I already have a spiritual teacher. I don't, I'm not looking for a, another teacher. I've, I've done 18 years of this. And when this happened, my boyfriend actually went down this rabbit hole all day yesterday of researching allegation after allegation after allegation that's being made against her and her foundation, which again, they're just allegations, right? Not saying they're true, but it did open up a different perspective for me as to the issue that happened. And with that being said, you know, when we talk about information and not having information. One thing, and I think we've talked about this a lot, Catherine, and it just, you know, if, if we're playing this game of werewolf, and you're out there and you're a villager and you're trying to find a spiritual teacher or a mentor or whatever, this opens up another conversation. And I know we've talked about this before, but I think it bears repeating so that you're not the villager that makes the stupid decision and ends up getting killed by the werewolf, right? Um, mm -hmm. Teachers are not supposed to control you. They're not supposed to, you're not supposed to give everything to your teacher. And I was telling you offline, Catherine, like I've attracted a lot of narcissists in my life, but never in my with my teachers. I've always had really good teachers that respected boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I think we see this a lot. We're seeing this a lot in this infiltrated spiritual world where these, you know, narcissists, I'm not saying this about uh, Kaya Ra. I'm, I'm just using that, just generally speaking, like this is, I don't know her. I don't know anything about her. This is just generally speaking as a whole. You know, we're seeing a lot of these like, almost like cult leaders rise up, they're charismatic and they kind of mirror the spiritual enlightenment and all this kind of stuff. And they kind of take people in and they end up kind of abusing their students by taking control. And I think it's important that people, when they go in seeking it, and of course we can't interrupt your karma. If that's part of your karma to experience that then okay. But to, to understand and have that information of how to find a spiritual teacher. So you don't end up 
being completely manipulated. So you do end up holding your, your boundaries. And I know one thing, Catherine, I was saying, we, we talked about this, like you and I will sit on the show or in Shanti, our friend Shanti too, and we'll say, you know, a right knee issue, you know, that's fear of the future and your rights, your masculine side. So that might mean that you're afraid of how you're going to pay your bills. That's stuff we know, but I know when I'm dealing with my students, if they're having a right knee issue, I'm not going to be the one to put that idea in their head. Yeah. That's just what are the information I know so that I know how to work with them, but I'm always going to be responding to what they are giving me. Yeah, and if they ask you and say, look, I've looked at all the other things, have you got any other angles I could explore? That's yeah. very different. And I think, you know, one of the things that I interviewed with Kathy O, yeah. um, we did this week that you can all go and watch, she said something very profound about this, and I think it's it, – it, even this we could do a whole show just on her comment that she made separate whether it's politics spiritual teacher anything separate the message from the personality of the teacher or the messenger and I think you know we're so you and I have talked so many times about this black and white thinking it's like one person we get it the whole time you'll have a guest on the channel and yeah. you get shamed so much I'm I'm unsubscribing now it's just it's the funniest thing I'm like you just don't need to announce your department departure it's not an airport but this this righteousness this self-righteousness that you've got one person on that they disagree with so they'll throw away all the potential learning or insights they can get just because you've offended their ego by yeah. having one person on that they have decided they've disagreed with and also you know they can love one person and then they say one single thing you know they might be the best the person they follow for the longest and then this person might say they believe in flat earth and they're around earth there so suddenly they throw the baby out of the bathwater and then they get everything there's no one on this planet that's got all the answers about everything. Now, a lot of the, going back to the werewolf game, a lot of the people who control a lot of what's happening on the planet do have certain spiritual laws that they understand very, very well and have deliberately kept hidden from us greater unwashed, as they like to call us, and you can, um, as the monarchy used to say, the great unwashed, um, because if we get that information, they can't control us with us anymore. Um, they has act, yeah. Yeah. They has uh, they us. So all these things. Like, I love that. They has us. They has yeah. us. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's so funny that, you know, everything does link together, you know, the divine matrix, um, quantum entanglement. These principles are really, really important. And that's why I loved it when you sent through the werewolf example, because it was like, well, yeah, because it is very hard for most people to think, you know, it's like the saying, there's no truth, there's no smoke without fire. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's how they control us because yeah. they call something a conspiracy theorist, and immediately 90% of the population don't look any further. And yet, they're the ones that have deliberately come up with that name to stop people looking further. If anything's called a conspiracy theorist, that's exactly where you should be looking. Exactly. And also in the, in the flip side too, we've talked about many times, like just because, you know, mainstream media isn't always, we'll say they're just entertaining you. We'll say there's yeah. just entertainment. Um, that doesn't mean that all the truthers are all are correct then. Mm. There's, doesn't mean that that and I think about that too with the lack of information how many people do we know Catherine that have painted like an actor bad just because somebody on YouTube said they were yeah they have no proof and so put yourself do unto others as you would have them do unto you like how would you feel if somebody casted you as this terrible person that needed to be unalived when you literally had done nothing wrong like the same with me with the strikes like I did nothing wrong you know so so I, our, Jessie's a voter is another one that I freaking love Jessie. I don't agree with everything she says, but I love her. Mm. I think she's great. And she's so valuable to, to explaining and teaching things. And the other day I was listening to her and our friend Shanti talk about, and I don't even remember what video it was, but she, she kind of uh, echoed something that we've all been saying, which is give, you know, give, 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 give people, you know, give them a chance. Like they don't, you know, don't uh don't paint everybody so bad i can't remember exactly how she said it you know you you need to like give people the benefit of the doubt and like you know maybe maybe you're wrong and what and, and you can do that this ties back with exactly what you were saying about your comments on the youtube you can do that whilst maintaining your boundaries and feeling right. safe 
So yeah. would I leave my dog or my children with half these people? No, but that doesn't mean I have to go and spread gossip about them that I've no idea whether it's right or not. You see, you can you can do both. You can maintain sensible boundary safety rules and make, without putting yourself. I mean, knowing what I know about Hollywood and what most people have known for ages, would I ever want my daughter to go to an audition? No, and certainly never one unaccompanied. However. You you put sensible boundaries in place without having to character assassinate people that you've got no idea. And again, something else in our previous interview, and you can find all of those on our Rumble channels with Kathy O, that she said, and she said very clearly, you know, when we're talking about a lot of the presidents, top political figures, top judges and things, a lot of them have been victims of a lot of this behaviour. And as she said, you can't really rationally brainwash someone for the actions they've taken when they're under mind control. And we're all under mind control. So even when we're being gentle with each other, and yeah, we can't all use the right words at the right time, but it's just a question of just being open to learning and taking constructive feedback and understanding the implications of your judgments and understanding that if we don't, all get better at communicating, reading energy, condoning good behaviour. Um, nothing's going to change in our outer reality and we can't really then moan about all the stuff that's been done to us. And the dehumanization, I, I'll give you an example. Um, Gabby Petito, who hap her, her um, unaliving happened a while, a few years ago, um, young girl. And at that time, I remember a lot of people in our, our community were saying, oh, this is fake. This is totally fake. Mm. Never happened. She's not a real person. And I kind of like, okay, cool. That's probably true. Well, as of late, I've been looking more into the case and I feel so guilty because she was a real person and mm. she lost her life. And so I think sometimes when we don't allow ourselves the opportunity to look at all perspectives, instead of just going with the crowd, we lose that humanity. We lose that sensitivity. We lose that compassion. We lose, you know, if, if the person that struck my videos had actually watched my videos on the Sophia Code, they would have seen I was promoting them. And instead, they lost a supporter. With that being said, I can still look at the Sophia Code and say it's a great book. It's The, the stories are beautiful, but the stories are stories that have been around for ages. The Kuan Yin story, the Mary Mac. It's great they're all together. And the way she writes it is beautiful. I can recognize that, but still now put a boundary up when it comes to the foundation and the work. You know, two things can be true. Again, it's, again, not black and white. I can forgive them, but also have my boundary put up and not get involved, yeah. right? And, and that's and that's for my own. It's like um, a doctor. I don't know if you've ever seen this channel, Catherine. It's a great channel. It's called Hidden True Crime, speaking of. Um, and it's this guy. I'm bound to get them shown to me tonight. Yeah, I know, I'm right? Still have it all popped up. It's this guy. His name is Dr. John. He's a forensic uh, psychologist. Oh, yes, I have. I have. We looked. We discussed because um, with some of the other videos yes, we did. Yes. It was relevant. He's yeah. Great. And he looks at the psychology behind, I, I noticed, and there's some things he says I don't agree with, but that's okay. But what he does is he looks at these criminals and he gives them humanity. He talks about what causes people to the psychology behind why people behave the way they do. And so it brings like humanity kind of back into, into our society. And, and that's, that's so important. It's so important. And, um, you know, when we, re it's interesting, you know, to, to react and we all are guilty of like reacting on impulse like that's not I'm not saying but when people have a pattern of doing that that's called borderline personality disorder mm. and that's a huge issue it, people with BPD that it's left untreated it can cause a lot of damage a lot of damage and most people with the good news is BPD is very treatable so mm. I, I totally respect people who goes yeah I have BPD and I'm, I'm being treated for it because they know they're aware you know that, that this is an issue and what I see though Catherine in our society we talk about because painting things black and white that's another side effect of BPD um, making rash judgments without thinking things through um, and so what I feel like that's what they're getting us to is a place where we completely just rip each other apart and tear each other apart without understanding we have more in common than with the not. And if we step back and wait for a moment, let things play out. Like if that person had actually watched my videos, they would have realized, Oh my God, this woman is really promoting our work, you know, yeah. or the fact that the Sophia code foundation is all about supporting women and spirituality. 
Mm-hmm. So I was per, I was supporting their work with women in uh, in spirituality, but they turned around and took me, a woman, took my work away, tried to take my work away from me. And if they had thought about that before making the action, they would have realized the hypocrisy in what that action was doing. You know, but again, I forgive them, but I'm not going to be involved with them anymore. I'm not going to promote the book anymore. So, you know, it's it's um yeah, it's just an interesting concept. And I would tell you guys, Catherine, you guys, I okay. So I don't like game shows and I don't like board games either, but I love, we call it Clue here in America. I think you guys call it Cluedo in England. Yeah. I love that board game. I love that. Yeah. That was right. My level. (laughs) I loved Clue. I loved it. I I loved it as a kid. I did not like Monopoly. Hated other board games. I thought it was boring. But, and and the same with game shows. Like I never liked watching Jeopardy. I thought they were kind of bore. Will of Fortune. I thought they were boring. But I love traders, you guys. And if you guys go, if you are interested in exploring, and that's probably why I like the game Traders, because it's so psychological. Mm -hmm. If you are in, I don't know about any non-English speaking countries, you might have a version of it in France or Germany or something. But if you are an English speaking country, America, Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand, they have whatever streaming platform you have, they have, I've watched every English speaking country's version of traders. And I've it never is, heard of it. Yeah. Oh my God! It is the American one uses celebrities. All right. So the first season, it was both celebrities and mixed in with normal people, and um, the second season, it was all celebrities. So it's interesting because you're seeing them in a different capacity too. But in the UK, I don't. I think there were some, maybe some in the UK, and then Australia was all just regular old Joe Schmoes. But it's the same thing where you have a room full of they, they stay in a castle together, and two of them are deemed traitors. And the rest are just um, the regular commoners. And the traders every night unalive someone. And the, the rest of the people have to... And of course, they're doing games during the day to collect money and prizes. So it's very strategic as to who they're going to unalive, not to draw suspicions to themselves. Then the traders have to eventually turn on each other to see who's the last man standing. So I would absolutely, you guys, Alan Cummings is the one who hosts it for the American. Um, and it's, they, they take the Americans to a, a Scottish castle and he's hysterical, Alan Cummings anyway. But um, I would absolutely, if this conversation about, it's identical to the werewolf game. So I would, if you want to- I mean, do- doing it in a Scottish castle, because those castles, I'll tell you what, I took my mum to a big old um, country estate house yesterday for a treat out. And they are creepy, you know. Yeah. You, you you know, if even if you know you're playing in a game where yeah. someone's going to be unalived, you'd still be sitting in your room under the covers. Going well, and they'll have it. to stay in separate rooms too because they're all playing yeah. as individuals, and so you can't yeah. room with somebody in case one of your friends is the one that gets take eliminated because then yeah. you it's it's um. So yeah, I would be too. I'd be like totally like have all the lights on while I'm sleeping. Yeah, but I would absolutely. I think in Australia they just do it in some hotel, but yeah. actually the British. I think if I remember correctly. The British cast, I think it's only been one season in England, and the two American cast, it's the same castle that they do it. I, I, I might have to look it up. And I think, you know, when we're talking about things like this, it's just like open our eyes and be curious. And when you see the games that are being played with all of us, once you take the cover off, I mean, David Icke says it so beautifully, is then suddenly you're not going to be so programmable. You're not going to be in such a fear state because you can understand what the end game is and therefore how they're playing you and coercing you into um, to get into their end result. And if we all wake up to that, it's going to be really difficult for them to do it. And once you see, you can't unsee it. Well, that's the thing with the traders game is you as the audience member, you know who the traders are and you know they don't know, but you know, so you can see. You yeah. can see how they start to get paranoid, how they start to turn on it. You can see how the traders actually, the ones that play it well, are able to like put ideas into people's heads that don't exist. Yeah. They're trying to pin the pinpoint people who aren't traders. Yeah. And so it's 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 totally true, Catherine. Like, because you're watching it as an outsider. And so how do you take that? psychology and apply that to even though it's just a game and nobody's really being unalived it's just a game but how do you take that and apply it to your own life i tell you though i would love to host the traders game but i would have a literal panic attack playing that game so i'd love to play it i'm i'm putting myself up and also i'm just gonna throw this in there if you ever wonder why they're putting more surveillance cameras out do you know that with there's a patent out and normally by the time we know there's a patent it's already been done i can't prove that but anyone who wears airpods i've done loads of videos on how dangerous they are for the mf but there's patents where they're collecting your brain waves to read your responses and brain waves so seriously guys 
if you are actually using some of these modern technologies, they're create they're look, if they can monitor tiny little changes in electrical currents and know what it's doing, these technologies, whether it's smart cities, whether it's the surveillance cameras, whether it's your AirPods, whether it's your smart watches, no, 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 don't wear them. You know, they are connecting all these details and making it so easy to control you because they're two-way devices. You can, any of these electrics, they're not, they're collecting information, but they're also putting information into you. So is that just for AirPods or is it, he sorry guys, my, 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 my boyfriend's friend just stopped by and you might hear Robbie barking because he gets so excited. So sorry if you hear that, it's not a demon, it's my dog barking. Um, is it, is it just uh, AirPods or is it also just headphones in general? Well, the AirPods will be able to collate more information than the headphones in general. But you know, just like the fact they said, you know, I have my phone off and I can be talking to you about true crime. And then the next time I turn my phone on, there's a true crime recommendation for me on YouTube, which didn't come from me. So, you know, this is the yeah. thing is, it's like when we're wondering how the evil controllers stay one head to the head of the game. They know how to work it better than they know how to work the game. They, better they're better. making it. They're well. this data all the time. So just just be cautious and just think, oh, that's interesting. Why is that being shown to me? That I that makes me yeah okay my headphones are old but I well the thing I'll say this I never wear the earbuds because if you have ear issues like Catherine and I have ear issues it actually and it actually it, it, well it, I can't because I've got hearing aids but you see my hearing aids are digital but I don't connect them into anything anymore I used to before I knew better because it's really hard for me to speak on the phone with my hearing aids and then once I got more into what well, they're collecting with this I was like no I'll just say pardon a lot yeah. I mean, I can't hear for shit either, and I don't have anything in it. Sometimes people are speaking to me, and I don't even realize it. So, you know, yeah. uh, I know I can't wear anything too close to my eardrum because it will infect. It will start to irritate my ears. Yeah. So I have regular headphones. But um, can hear. Yeah. I've got my big regular ones, which yeah. are wired. Although since I just last week had to update my phone, I haven't got the connector, so I've got to get a new connector so that I can wire them and not have them on Bluetooth. And don't get paranoid, guys. It's just like the more we're like, oh, that's how we do it the more you can realize when you're being manipulated and some manipulation, it's like anything The tool it's not the tool. It's how it's being used. You yeah. know, it can be really good manipulation. Like when you're training your dog. Yeah. And it can be bad manipulation. I nearly said husband then, but then of course. <laughs> <I'm always bad. laughs> I was, well, you know, it's so funny. I, 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 anybody as who's a parent will probably laugh and I, I'm not a parent, but I'm an aunt. You guys, my sister just had a little baby, but her three-year-old May, um, who literally just potty trained and got rid of her pacifier right before the new baby came has reverted back now, which I think they kind of expected because yeah. you know, was talking to my sister's like for the next few months, it's fine. And she wet her pants a couple of times. It's fine. But, um, I felt myself working with May yesterday, the way I work with Robbie. I was like, yes. Oh, good girl. Good yeah. girl. I was like, I'm working with May the exact same way I work. I was like, I work with my, with, with, uh, and I was holding my, my new nephew and I was like, that's a good boy. And I was like, that's yeah. exactly what I'm saying. So, you know what? It works on, on all species. And it is kind of funny though, a harmless, I, at one point, a, a couple of years ago was doing a drive and a donation for Christmas and they send you lists. And it was a woman who had obviously was very large. And so she wanted clothing that was a larger size, like a size 16. I'm a two. And so I was on the internet, like ordering clothes from her her from like a like Lane Bryant a company for bigger women and all of a sudden for like a few weeks after I always get recommendation for like and I just laugh because that's not my size and it wasn't for me but you know you can laugh at that because yeah. it's homeless but when you see it when you realize what's happened you you then can can choose you can choose whether you're going to react to it or not you know so you know and, and it's really worth looking on my channel last week Bryce and I for our copy chat we did uh uh, a video that really links into this and the sort of I can't mindset and how important looking into that is so I think you know just keep questioning it keep aware be open to feedback as well because other people can see us you know us being brainwashed by things much quicker than we can see it ourselves Absolutely. I, I can't wait to hear you guys, all your, your comments in the comment section. If you guys have watched Traders, let me know if you noticed anything psych psychologically about how the game was being played. Um, Catherine, I want you to watch at least one episode. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to find it and watch it. I'm thinking if you guys want, Catherine, if you, we might even want to do a watch party because 
fair use. Uh, we can watch. We can watch an episode and give commentary. So if you I think we should, like, I I think it's really really important. It's so interesting things like this and the manipulation and. Um, I think I'd be quite good at manipulating to put on it. And so I'd quite like to go on it and see. I would yeah. just like to be the host and wear the cute outfits and be like, you're, you know, because I would probably, I would have a panic attack. And you see some people get like, and it's just a game. Like no one's really yeah. doing it live. It's just a game. But, um, but yeah, you guys, if you guys want to perhaps do like a watch party of a couple of the episodes, talk about like how, you know, the, the manipul the, the, the players are playing themselves. Right, they're playing themselves. Yeah. The, the they just have to put put into motion. These are the traders. These are the regular people, and then the players play themselves, and everybody just sits back and watch the chaos unfold with the mind, you know. And so it's a it's a huge. It, it is the werewolf game. It is the werewolf game in a different capacity, and it's so enlightening. It's so enlightening. So let me know you guys, and if you guys want us to do a watch party, maybe we can schedule a day where we watch <laughs> watch yeah. an episode. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, you guys. Well, next week we will be back on Catherine's episode, or Catherine's episode, Catherine's channel. So make sure you are subscribed to all of our channels, including our backup channels, because again, you never know with this platform what's going to happen as we learned. So just make sure you've got the backup of ours um, that you're you're subscribed to those. And all of our again for our new subscribers, anything we have that's super. I don't know if I mentioned this before. Anything Catherine and I do together or independent of each other that's super potent, meaning we absolutely cannot put it on this platform, it will always go directly just to that. So that other platform does have stuff that's not on our, our YouTube. Yeah. So make sure you are subscribed to anyway so you can see um, see some of the stuff that we, we can't put on YouTube. So, all right, you guys. Well, have a- Thanks so much. Day. Bye, everybody. Bye.